Hello. The theme of tonight's show is rock management. And joining me to talk about it is our first guest tonight, Mr. Simon Napier-Bell. Good evening, son. Hello. Managed a few groups in your time. One or two. Including the Yardbirds, Japan, Wham, and a whole host of new bands. Do you, um, do you like to have any specific amount of bands at any one time? Mm. I mean, are there any more than you can handle? Yeah, you, well, usually anything you're handling is more than you can handle. Um, I do like breaking new groups. I enjoy taking on new groups. I get tempted, and even when I say I'll never do it again, I always want to do it again. And it's, I think it's taking the new groups and bringing them through and breaking them, which is what I like doing best. So I do tend to get involved with more groups than some of the other managers. Yeah, I mean, you're accredited with finding Wham. How does one go about finding Wham? Well, I, think Wham. I found them. I went after and chased them and got them. I was accredited with getting Wham, not finding them. And Wham already had a hit when I took them on. So it was really a matter of uh, persuading them that they needed me and uh, making it all work. And it did work. It seemed to, yeah. For a period. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't. No, what, it did. What? When did yeah. it not work? Well, I mean, in terms of... Well, 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 as far as I know, it was wham, it worked, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, this was up, yeah. Um, why, did, why did you not continue managing either of them? Um, well, the split up was really a, f a falling out with George at that yeah. time. Um, various reasons and um, anyway long right at the beginning of managing Wham George has said his ambition was to be a solo artist and to look after his own life and not be managed although in fact he does have a manager now and it certainly was his intention after Wham to look after his own life and that we'd always discussed it and that's always what it's going to be so it was a matter of how long Wham lasted and do you have any thoughts on what's happening I mean at the moment it seems specifically to be uh looking after his own thing so much that he doesn't really want anyone... Yeah, he does. I mean, he, I think he's, he's, he, he says a lot more that he looks after his things than he does. I mean, he, he uh, continually reiterates that uh, no one's ever made a decision for him in his life and things like that. I think you have to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, don't you? And it's strange now that he's not appearing in his own videos. Um, and you were saying that's a, a bit of promotion in itself, really, yeah. Well, he... he, he um, yeah, it's quite a good trick, isn't it? He's made quite a a big thing about not appearing in them, sufficient for it to be a good promotional technique in itself. And because what I was going to talk to you I mean, about... I'm quite sure if nobody appeared in their videos, it became the done thing not to appear in videos, he'd be the first one to get back in the video. Then. Yeah. Well, that was what I was going to talk to you about. I mean, you started managing in the 60s, and um, it no was videos. a relatively new thing, no? No videos. No videos, of mm. course, no videos. And, and, and you had to make promotional tools, of, you know, you had to... Well, it, it was more, I mean, press... Uh, the, 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 I mean, the two promotional tools are music is the fundamental tool and, and conveying the imagery to people and I don't think there's such a uh, there's certainly a difference in how it's conveyed in terms of video or press but the actual uh, method of promotion was the same it was to combine the music with the purveyance of the imagery and that was done by press and by newsreel if you managed to get into the, the level where you could get newsreel like Beatles But did you ever get involved in things that was specifically to to, to yeah, expand on something that wasn't really happening, you know, to a scam or, or... Well, I don't think anyone ever has built a major artist out of somebody who wasn't naturally happening. What you really do is you take something which might just have been of a moderate size and you can expand it into something really mammoth. And sometimes you do that by the sheer musicality of it, which is what your other two guests are particularly good at doing with their two groups. And I have rather a reputation for taking something which might not have happened otherwise and turning it into something which is probably verged more towards the pop side and more towards the the promotional scam side, but you, you still can't make a major artist from nothing. A major artist's got to have a real substance there. They've got to be great writers and they've got to have an ability to project their own image and it's got to be an interesting image and they've got to be an interesting personality. I mean, you say that you like to involve yourself in the creative side of, of building a band up. And where do you think, um, I mean, do you think that, that you were employed by the bands or were you employing the bands? I mean, you... Well, technically, you're always employed by the bands, everybody. That's the nature of a contract and the nature of a management contract, it's just as a lawyer's employed. But uh, certainly in the 60s, there was much more feeling that the bands felt they were coming to you to be employed and you were in charge. And nowadays, perhaps it has reverted to what the reality is, that the manager's employed. But uh, you don't have to... I mean, managers aren't really employed in the normal sense of the word. They're not prepared to do things they don't want to do very much, uh, apart from deal with the groups in general anyway. But they're, they're, they don't, they're generally speaking, if, you're, if your advice isn't getting accepted, you're not going to go along and continue to do it. 